Gun Wu is a talented boxing athlete who is training hard to prepare himself for an upcoming match. Not only does he have excellent boxing skills, but he is also a gentle and polite young man. As he returned home, he found his mother calling someone to ask if she could have more time to pay the rent on her shop. Since his parents divorced, his mother has been renting a cafe to support them. This led Gun Wu to train more intensely, as he knew that if he won a boxing match, the prize he would receive would be quite rewarding. Meanwhile elsewhere, three government officials are discussing the construction of a building that was delayed due to the COVID pandemic, resulting in a construction company going bankrupt. A few moments later, a man named Kim Myon Gil joined the meeting. He wants to invest the funds needed to complete the construction of the building, which is rumored to be a luxury hotel. Despite the fact that he often lends his money to various parties, Kim Myon Gil is reluctant to be called a loan shark. He shared with them about his investment business which he has been doing for decades. They eventually agreed to accept a 100 billion won loan from Kim Myong Gil and agreed to his terms, one of which was to set up a small casino on the top floor of the building. This deal made Kim Myong Gil's wife very happy, as she would also start a nightlife business if the hotel actually opened. Later on, Kim Myong Gil discusses some of the debtors who are in arrears with his confidant, Jang Du. In the meantime, Gun Wu is preparing to participate in a national beginners tournament. The organizers of the tournament had to hold it without spectators due to the pandemic. Although without the audience cheering, Gun Wu defeated Wu Jin with his side punches. Gun Wu's mother was watching her son's impressive performance on a live broadcast while working. After the match, Gun Wu invited Wu Jin to eat together. According to him, Wu Jin was his opponent only in the boxing arena. At that moment, Wu Jin accepted Gun Wu's invitation, not only because he was hungry but also because he had no money, not to mention that his coach had ignored him because he had lost the match. Wu Jin later asked Gun Wu about the prize money from the tournament, and Gun Wu said that he would give all the money to his mother, who needed to pay off her debts. Wu Jin was amazed by the strength of Gun Wu's left hand, which managed to knock him out. They become even closer when they find out that they came from the same infantry during their military service. On their way home, Wu Jin exchanged his mobile numbers and promised to treat Gun Wu in return. When she got the envelope of money from Gun Wu, his mom was touched, thinking that Gun Wu should use the money for himself. Gun Wu is a devoted son to his mother, particularly since he never knew about his father's existence. On one particular evening, Gun Wu saw a group of men in luxury cars, hanging around his mother's shop. It turned out that those men were Kim Myong Gil's men who were plotting evil intentions. They had deceived the business owners under the pretext of providing loans with the lowest interest rates. Their goal is none other than to evict them and take control of the building that is currently owned by the business owners. The following day, Myong Gil ordered some of his employees to influence the owners or tenants of businesses, including Gun Wu's mom. Most of them borrowed money from Kim Myong Gil's company, Smile Capital. The company has a special program from the government to help business owners who have been affected by the pandemic. Unbeknownst to them, in the agreement letter, there was a statement that they had to pay an administration fee for loan renewal of 20% per week, which was written in tiny notes. On one such day, as the boxing gym was closed, Gun Wu planned to meet Wu Jin at his home. While looking for Wu Jin's address, he saw a homeless man who seemed to need help after being attacked by a mysterious figure. Gun Wu then chased after that person, who turned out to be a woman. She claims that she's not a criminal, so there's no need for Gun Wu to interfere. That girl, whose name was Hanju, later went to see an old man, whom she called Mr. Choi. To Mr. Choi, she reported that she had just had a fight with someone who wouldn't pay back his debt. It is known that Mr. Choi is a millionaire who wants to use his wealth to help people in trouble, including lending money without interest. According to him, being able to save many lives with the money he has is a priceless blessing. Mr. Choi realized that Hyunju's safety was threatened by working with him. So he contacted an acquaintance named Mun Guang Mu to find a trustworthy bodyguard for her. At Wu Jin's house, Gun Wu and Wu Jin talked about their daily lives as jobless. Gun Wu then offered Wu Jin the opportunity to become a delivery worker. By becoming one, they can not only earn money but also exercise at the same time. One week later, Smile Capital started collecting debts from shop owners. The first shop they went to was Yun So Yun's, Gun Wu's mother's. Armed with a number of bodyguards, Kim Myong Gil's men, Kim Jun Min threatened her to pay the renewal fee in exchange for a small interest rate. They did not even hesitate to destroy the store. Realizing that she had been deceived, So Yin in her fear and anxiety called her son and asked him to come home immediately as there were several men threatening her. 
Seeing his mother in danger, Gunwoo beat up ten of Kim Myong Gil's bodyguards with his bare hands. Gunwoo then asked one of the bodyguards what they really wanted. A moment later, Kim Myong Gil came with his bodyguards and explained that his mother had borrowed money from his company. Watching Gun Wu's tenacity in fighting made Kim Myong Gil amazed because no one had been able to match the strength of his bodyguard in Biam. Kim Myong Gil then hurt Gun Wu's face as he felt humiliated when Gun Wu spat on him in front of his subordinates. So Yeon couldn't do anything when Myong Gil hurt her son. She couldn't ask anyone for help because there were no people in the shop at that time. After Kim Myong Gil left, so Yeon called an ambulance and brought the battered Gun Wu to the hospital. Fortunately, Gun Wu had a strong and healthy body, so he didn't feel much pain when he had to get 30 stitches on his face. So Yeon couldn't hide her sadness when she saw Gun Wu having to suffer the consequences of her carelessness by borrowing money from Myong Gil. A few days later, Wu Jin checked So Yeon's loan papers and confirmed that Smile Group had committed fraud. However, Gun Wu couldn't report the incident to the police because it would endanger his mother's life. While the scars on his face can never disappear, Gun Wu is grateful that there was no neurological damage to the area. A doctor recommended that Gun Wu undergo laser treatment to reduce the scars on his face, but Gun Wu refused as right now, his priority was to pay off all of his mother's debts to avoid getting even more in interest. Wu Jin fulfills his promise to treat Gun Wu at his favorite restaurant. After their meal, Gun Wu accidentally heard Wu Jin calling someone to ask for a loan in order to help him. Later on, they went to a loan shark who they believed could help Gun Wu. To get help from the loan shark, the latter had one condition. Gun Wu had to join his business as a debt collector. Both Wu Jin and Gun Wu refused the condition as the job required them to be violent. He thought that beating up weak people for money was no different than being a thug. Kun Ju was following a debtor named Jam Myong. Jam Myong had just borrowed money from a number of different moneylenders. He then gave a sum of money to one of Kim Myong Gil's men, named Jun Min. Afterwards, Hyun Ju relayed her suspicions to Mr. Choi, because she felt that there was something wrong. Choi Taho suspected that Jam Myong had committed fraud as he used some homeless people's identities. Choi Taho was sure that Jam Myong was being used by the so called loan mafia, because decades ago, there was someone who implemented a similar business, however, that man fled abroad. We cut to Mun Gwang Mu, who has yet to find a bodyguard that fits Choi Taho's criteria. Unexpectedly, Wu Jin called him, and at that moment, Wang Mu realized that he had found the right person to be Hun Ju's bodyguard. He thinks Wu Jin is his suitable criterion because, apart from being an athlete, Wang Mu has known him for a long time when they were in the military. At first, Gun Wu's purpose in meeting Wang Mu was to borrow money. But Guang Mu instead suggested that both of them go quickly to Choi Taho, who was currently in need of a bodyguard. Moreover, Choi Taho is also known as a person who often helps others unconditionally. Guang Mu then explained that Choi Taho was a confidant of a director named Bang Su Ho, who had the most money in circulation in Korea. Considering the two young men have good talented backgrounds, Choi Taho finally agrees to hire them. Gun Wu and Wu Jin realized that Choi Tahu was not a random person. He is always surrounded by skilled undercover agents. That very day, Gun Wu got his salary for the next two years, as Choi Tahu knew that Gun Wu was in need of money. Gun Wu then gave the money to his mother to pay off her debts. He was willing to put his dream of becoming a boxer on hold because he had to work, and for him, a happy life with his mother was everything. Jun Min expressed his thoughts to his boss, Kim Myong Gil saying that what he did to Gunwu a few days ago was too much. Myong Gil then stated that he had to be violent to make them afraid, especially towards a determined person like Gunwu. A while later, Myong Gil met with Lyle Group's eldest son, Hong Min Byeom, who had previously made a deal with him. Min Byeom seems to be suspicious of Myong Gil's business, and he intends to investigate Smile Capital's business and assets. At the meeting, Kim Myong Gil felt that he should be more careful, considering that Hong Min Byeom has many connections in various places, including law enforcement and politicians. Myong Gil then orders Jang Du to dig up more information about him. We return to Gun Wu, who is about to meet the woman he has to escort, who is none other than Hyun Ju. Under the guise of a second-hand bookstore, Mr. Choi apparently keeps a lot of money on the bookshelves. When they find out that there is money in the neatly arranged book boxes, both Gun Wu and Wu Jin are shocked and curious as to why Mr. Choi doesn't keep his money in the bank. When he saw Kenju's picture, Gunwu remembered that he had met her before, and she had even tasered him. As Choi Taho guessed, 
Yunju refused to have an escort when she worked, saying she was fine by herself. Following Hanju's refusal, Gunmu begged on his knees in front of her to give him one month's trial period as he desperately needed a job to pay his mother's debts. In response, Hyunju gave Gunwoo a chance because she felt sorry for him. She then invited Gunwoo to eat together. While enjoying the food, Gunwoo told her about his family's misfortune. Apart from having to pay the debt and its interest, his mom also had to lose money because her cafe was destroyed by the debt collectors. Kunju and Gunwoo then investigated Jam Myong. The man turned out to have been pretending to be homeless and using different identities in order to get loans. Kunju is convinced that this syndicate is organized by someone quite powerful. Jan Myong apparently deceived the homeless under the guise of distributing compensation, but in reality, he took the homeless people's identity cards as collateral for debt. Unable to stand Jan Myong's actions that injured a homeless person, Gun Wu then called for an ambulance so that the poor person could be treated immediately. However, what Gun Wu did made Hyunju upset and angry. She thought what Gun Wu had done had made her lose Jan Myong's traces. Kun Ju then fired Gun Wu and Wu Jin because they didn't follow her orders, thus ruining all her plans to gather evidence of Jam Myong's crimes. Gun Wu and Hyun Ju had an argument, as Gun Wu didn't accept being blamed. What he did was only to help someone who was injured. Gun Wu then opened the wound on his cheek while giving the reason that he couldn't ignore someone injured right in front of him. If he didn't help him, then he was just as bad as Smile Capital's boss, who often abuses the weak. As they are about to leave Mr. Choi's bookstore, Gun Wu and Wu Jin get a message from Hyun Ju's, stating that she has changed her mind and that she allows them to continue working the next day. Jae Myong went to Jun Min and reported that he had been beaten up by two mysterious men wearing red cat hats. He then said that he had previously owed money to a loan shark whose collectors wore similar hats. Jun Min freaked out because his work collecting data on the homeless was starting to be discovered. Jae Myong then brought Jun Min to Mr. Choi's bookstore where he had borrowed money from a crippled old man. The next day, Hyun Ju and her two bodyguards, Gun Wu and Wu Jin, discussed their plan to help the moneylender that Jam Myong had cheated. They planned to coerce Jam Myong to return the money he had borrowed. In the middle of discussing their plan, they were surprised that the person they were talking about came to the bookstore with Jun Min. Hyun Ju quickly turned off the lights and closed the door tightly. Jun Min was sure that the bookstore was more than just an ordinary store as its gate was made from indestructible iron. With the arrival of Jam Myong and Jun Min, Yun Ju had to become more vigilant, as Smile Capital had found her base. A while later, Mr. Choi and his assistant, Owen Muck, came in and asked what was going on, knowing that a stranger had come into his store. After hearing Yun Ju's plan, Choi Taho forbade them to go after Jam Myong. However, Yun Ju argued his order. She pointed out that Mr. Choi's efforts all this time to help the poor would be in vain as the money would flow to the loan shark mafia. Mr. Choi then asked in Mukt to investigate Smile Capital's owner, Kid Myong Gil, who seems familiar to him. The friendship between Gun Wu, Wu Jin, and Hyun Ju is getting closer even though they just got to know each other. Wu Jin told them that the most important thing for him in a friendship is to have the same goals in life. Hyun Ju told Wu Jin about Mr. Choi's kindness in adopting her when she was 10 years old. Hyun Ju said that Mr. Choi was a generous person who sincerely helped the poor and had several orphanages. Hyun Ju learned many life lessons from him, including her ability to protect herself and ride a motorcycle. After hearing Hyun Ju's story, Gun Wu promised to repay Mr. Choi's kindness on her behalf. One day, Mai Ong Gil ordered his henchman, Jang Du, to attack Hong Min Biam for having bothered and belittled his credibility. In a nearby car park, Min Biam was assaulted and threatened to stop all his investigations into Kim Myong Gil. It turns out that the reason Kim Myong Gil gave Hong Min Biam a loan was to take over his hotel. He plotted to frame him. He will spread false rumors about him that he has opened an illegal gambling establishment under the guise of a casino. In another place, Mr. Choi learned about Smile Capital, which was really led by Kim Myong Gil whom he knew. It turns out that Kim Myong Gil is his former subordinate in the investment company he led decades ago. Mr. Choi recalled his past, he had to close his company for a reason that he kept secret. However, even though he had to close the company, he still gave his employees their annual salary and severance pay, even though there were still many debtors who had not paid their debts. Kim Myong Gil actually planned to rob the safe in Mr. Choi's office with an acquaintance, who was none other than Biam. His betrayal was caught by Mr. Choi, but at that point, he was unable to defend himself against in Biam's horsepower. Effortlessly, 
Beyond threw him from a great height. Since then, Choi Taho has been suffering from paralysis. Myon Gil managed to get rid of all the money in the safe, along with tens of billions of dollars worth of debt notes. He then set the office on fire. It took a long time for Mr. Choi to recover, as he almost died. Years later, he stepped away from the hustle and bustle of the loan business, and with the help of Owen Muck, he focused on humanitarianism with the remaining assets he had. Meanwhile, Kim Myon Gil and BM escaped. Armed with the debt notes he stole, Myon Gil collected the debts of Mr. Choi's debtors, and that's how his fortune began to accumulate and grow. Mr. Choi asked Kim Ju not to deal with Jam Myon, and he also asked her to have the money removed from the bookstore immediately. He wished to live peacefully as he grew older. Other than that, there were still many things he had to give to Hai and Ju. For the first time, Kim Myon Gil showed all his treasures of fine gold to BM in a secret place. The gold will be used as a source of living in a foreign country if his business in Korea does not go smoothly. He promised BM a luxurious life, treating BM as his younger brother. Hai and Ju faltered when she learned the number of Jam Myong's victims. Together with Gun Wu and Wu Jin, they'd finally agreed to capture Jam Myong, even though Mr. Choi had told them not to. Later that night, they went back to watch Jam Myong's base, but unfortunately, Jam Myong set them up. He contacted Jung Min to get the gangsters ready. Gun Wu and Wu Jin walked into Jam Myong's trap, an empty building, and the gangsters attacked them both. The moment he saw Gun Wu's face, Jun Min ordered his men to kidnap So Yun, who was sleeping soundly in her house. Realizing that her two friends were in danger, Yun Ju called Mr. Choi immediately. With no second thoughts, Mr. Choi ordered two of his best men to rescue them. A man named Yang Jun was assigned to check on So Yen, and he managed to thwart the kidnapping by slicing off Jam Myong's tendons and leaving him helpless. Meanwhile, Gun Wu and Wu Jin were struggling against the gangsters sent by Jun Min. Gun Ju also tried to help as much as she could, armed with a stun gun that she always carried wherever she went. Another man assigned by Choi Taho named Li Di Yong arrived at the building where the attack took place, but he chose to leave after knowing Gun Wu and Wu Jin managed to defeat their opponents. A few moments later, Gun Wu got a call from his mother, and she told him that she was safe and currently at Mr. Choi's house. She was concerned about Gun Wu and Wu Jin, who looked badly beaten. Choi Taho then reminded them not to move alone, as this war involved a large syndicate and could only end with death. He loves Xian Ju very much, and he doesn't want her to get hurt. Mr. Choi said that it was the adults who could be relied upon to solve this problem. Choi Taho then ordered Hyun Ju to find a safe place for So Yun, since her house was no longer safe. Choi Taho then entrusted Kim Myong Gil's affairs to Yang Jung and Du Yong, knowing that he couldn't take revenge with his hands because he was already old. The next day, Kim Myong Gil visited the injured gangsters, including Jae Myong's gang at the hospital. Based on their testimony, Kim Myong Gil was convinced that the person who had attacked them was someone who was skilled in using butcher knives. He then held a meeting with his confidants, Jun Min, Jang Du, and Biang. Myong Gil believed that the man who harassed him was his enemy from the past, whom he failed to kill. He then remembered Yang Jun, a very slippery and highly skilled man who was also feared by the gangsters. He was also sure that the girl involved in the fight last night had something to do with Choi Taho. Kim Myong Gil then ordered Jang Du and Biam to keep an eye on the bookstore, which he believes is being used as a money vault. A little about Wang Yang Jun on a daily basis, he manages a sashimi restaurant founded by Mr. Choi. On that day, he told his friend that he would be taking a short leave due to an important task. He is the executioner on whom Choi Taho has relied since he founded the investment company. Yang Jun went to his comrade, Li Du Yang, to discuss their plan to destroy Smile Capital on Choi Taho's orders. After checking the background of all Myong Gil's confidence, they began to move forward with their plan. Meanwhile, Choi Taho had agreed to move all the money inside the bookstore and ordered Hyun Ju to do so since they had very little time. The next day, Du Yang and Yang Jun began investigating at the gangster headquarters and Kim Myong Gil's residence. Meanwhile, on the other hand, Hai Nam Ju also began preparing the boxes needed to pack billions of dollars from the bookstore. Unfortunately, without them realizing it, Jang Du and Biam were stalking them. Due to the large amount of money they will be carrying, Gun Wu and Wu Jin took the initiative to take a trolley into the cellar, and Biam used the opportunity to knock them out. From the CCTV monitor, Hai Ju saw someone suspicious, and she decided to catch up with her two friends. 
Unfortunately, the back of Hyun Ju's head was hit by Jane Du, making her fall. The stun device that she had ended up being her own bitter pill. In the warehouse, Gudmu and Wu Jin unleashed all their boxing skills against Biam. Punch after punch, they aimed at Biam, but their efforts seemed to be in vain. Biam was so hard to take down. Inevitably, they both had to find another strategy. Wu Jin was almost killed by a shovel, but luckily Gun Wu was able to find Biam's weak point his ear. They were finally able to knock Biam out. Wu Jin tied him up with a random item he found and left him in the warehouse. Gun Ju finally regained her composure before Jang Du managed to kidnap her. She tried to fight back, even with her hands cuffed. With her ability to use a baton, she managed to injure Jang Du, who looked in pain due to a cut on his head. Haiyan Ju then handcuffed his hands to an iron pipe. A short while later, Jang Du managed to escape, and when Haiyan Ju realized that Jang Du had escaped, she tried her best to speed up the money-moving process because she was worried that Jang Du would seek backup. Jang Du called Kim Myong Gil and said that he had a problem and had to go to the hospital immediately. However, Kim Myong Gil stopped him, saying that he had to solve the mess no matter what. Kim Myong Gil became even more upset that there was no news about Biyang. Jang Du forced himself to endure the pain. He didn't want to lose his life for not being good at his job. After she was done moving all the money into the car, Haiyan Ju asked Gun Wu to drive it. Haiyan Ju also managed to move all the contents of the safe, which contained gold and stacks of dollars. At the same time, Jang Du met with the gangsters and guided them to the bookstore location. They then surrounded Hyun Ju, who was carrying all of Choi Taho's money. Haiyan Ju told Gun Wu to stay behind her car, no matter what. They then desperately broke through the back door bar to escape and avoid the gangsters. The empty streets made it easier for them to escape, but unfortunately, due to the heavy weight of the car, Gun Wu couldn't speed up. Jang Gu smashed into Haiyan Ju's car repeatedly, however, despite her car being smaller in size, Hyun Ju managed to pull off a maneuver that left Jang Du's car badly damaged. When they reached a tunnel, Haiyan Ju tried to block the gangster's car that was about to overtake Gun Wu's car. She didn't care that her car was destroyed in order to topple her opponent's car. The most important thing for her right now was to keep Mr. Choi's trust. Since her car was totally destroyed, Haiyan Ju and Wu Jin left the car and then made their way while carrying bags containing tens of kilograms of pure gold, making their steps heavy. Gun Wu had to throw away several boxes of money to make room in his car for Wu Jin and Haiyan Ju. After escaping the gangster's pursuit, they returned to Mr. Choi's house. Haiyan Ju apologized to Mr. Choi, as she didn't manage to bring all the contents of the safe. However, Choi Taho said that their safety was much more precious. In front of Mr. Choi, Haiyan Ju tried to hide the pain all over her body because she didn't want to worry her grandfather. Biyum finally regained consciousness and managed to untie his hands and feet. He then headed to the hospital for treatment. After being diagnosed, the doctor stated that Biyum had damage to his eardrum. Kim Myung Gil wanted to check the license plate of the car carrying the money from the bookstore to find out who was behind the incident. Choi Taho felt lucky and thanked Gun Wu and Wu Jin. Since they were around, Haiyan Ju's days became happier and more enjoyable. Thanks to his success in moving money from his store, Choi Taho deemed all of Gun Wu's loans paid off, so Gun Wu no longer needed to work as a bodyguard. Mr. Choi then told him that he would help Gun Wu and his mother set up a cafe in another city. However, Gun Wu politely declined the offer and he begged to be included in the fight against Kim Myung Gil. He wanted to repay Mr. Choi's kindness until the very end. The next day, Gun Wu, Wu Jin, and Haiyan Ju went to Yang Jun's dinner invitation, which was also attended by Du Yang. Actually, Du Yang did not agree with Gun Wu and Wu Jin getting involved in this matter because it could damage their reputation as athletes. However, seeing Gun Wu and Wu Jin's strong determination, Du Yang finally agreed to get them to join the mission. Du Yang and Haiyan Ju are in charge of getting rid of Jun Min, while Yang Jun and the two boxers will search for Jang Du, who was reportedly in the hospital. Before they started their mission, Yang Jun gave Gun Wu and Wu Jin a short training on knife techniques, and elsewhere, Haiyan Ju also got a new motorcycle that suited her needs. Du Yang trained her hand strength to use a club while riding a motorcycle afterward. Long story short, Gun Wu, Wu Jin, and Yang Jun arrived at the hospital through the back door. Yang Jun happened to see Jang Du at that moment, and he kidnapped him immediately as he came out of the elevator. Jang Du put up a fight, and in the middle of their fight against Jang Du, a man came to help Jang Du, so they also had to fight him off. 
In the end, the three of them managed to take Jang Du to Du Yang's warehouse. Meanwhile, elsewhere, at the parking lot, Du Yang and Hai Ju managed to knock Chen Min out. The commotion at the hospital made Kim Myong Gil furious as the safety of his confidence was threatened. He then checked the CCTV to find out where Jang Du was kept. However, Myong Gil's intention to check the CCTV on the main road ran into licensing obstacles, so he had to threaten a police officer to help him. He threatened one of the police officers, who happened to be a relative of Hong Min Biam, named Min Gang Yong. Myong Gil gave Gang Yong three hours to trace the location of the suspected car and motorcycle owners. He threatened Gang Yong by saying that he would spread Hong Min Biam's nasty video, which would certainly make Lyle Group's stock price plummet. Choi Taho then headed to his men's hideout to interrogate Jang Du about Myong Gil's business. Gun Wu and Wu Jin prepared the Selene solution as ordered by Yang Jun following the torture he suffered. Jang Du finally surrendered and was willing to open his mouth. Choi Taho also made a promise to send him abroad and guarantee his life. He was sure that Jang Du's life would not be spared when Myong Gil no longer needed him. Jang Du revealed all the evil of Myong Gil. He's not just an ordinary loan shark. All this time, Jang Du was in charge of making sure his boss's illegal activities were not detected by the police. Apparently, Myong Gil has been keeping records of the scandals of dozens of officials and businessmen, and he used the records as a weapon to threaten those people. No one has dared to go against Smile Capital's business so far. All the data is stored by Kim Myong Gil in a high-tech safe in his room. Myong Gil realized that the data could also drag him into prison, so he created a sophisticated device on his safe. The safe can ignite itself automatically. Choi Taho then asked where Myong Gil kept the stolen gold, but Jang Du admitted that he didn't know anything about it, only BM knew about it. Choi Taho told Hyun Ju the amount Myong Gil stole from him, and he also told her that he planned to take Hyun Ju along with Gun Wu and Wu Jin abroad once all the problems were solved. A while later, everyone gathered at Choi Taho's residence. That night, they drank together while strategizing to catch Kim Myong Gil. Afterward, Du Yang and Yang Jun exchanged stories since they hadn't seen each other in a long time. Yang Jun just found out that Du Yang now has a wife and will soon become a father. Du Yang apparently purposely did not tell Yang Jun about it because he was sure that Yang Jun would definitely not include him in this mission if he told him about his family. Gang Yang finally managed to track down the location where Jang Du was kept. As soon as Gang Yang gave Myong Gil the exact pinpoint, he mobilized dozens of gangsters to the location. However, when those gangsters arrived at the warehouse, it was empty, they found no one. They then searched the empty warehouse and managed to find Du Young's identity and where he lived. In the middle of the night, Du Young's wife heard a knock on the door, and a man who claimed to live downstairs said he wanted to check for water leaks. When Du Young heard about it, he became suspicious. He immediately asked his wife to call the police and hide while he tried to block all the doors and windows. Unfortunately, a gang of gangsters managed to break into his house by breaking the window. Kim Myong Gil threatened to kill Du Young's wife if he didn't tell him where Yang Jun and Choi Taho were. In the end, Du Young was killed by Kim Myong Gil. At Choi Taho's house, everyone was still in a warm and happy mood, as they had yet to learn about the tragic events that happened to Du Young. That morning, Choi Taho asked Hyun Ju and Gun Wu to take Gun Wu's mother to the orphanage so that she could help take care of the children there. After Hyun Ju, Gun Wu, and his mother left, only Choi Taho and Wu Jin were in the house because Yang Jun also had to leave to open his restaurant. Upon entering his restaurant, Yang Jun found Myong Gil waiting for him, and he didn't expect him to find him that quickly. Myong Gil was ready with weapons in both hands, and a fight between the two was inevitable. Myong Gil deliberately came alone this time and didn't mobilize his men because he wanted to deal with Yang Jun in his own way. After the fierce battle, Yang Jun finally died at the hands of Kim Myong Gil, who armed himself to the fullest, including bladed shoes and a protective jacket. A convoy of dozens of gangsters arrived at Choi Taho's residence, and they easily broke into the mansion. Wu Jin quickly realized that they were surrounded. Just as Choi Taho was about to retrieve the gun from his room, a gangster leader attacked Wu Jin and repeatedly slammed his body to the floor. Following the attack, Wu Jin suffered a stab wound to his abdomen. The gun that Choi Taho used also didn't help much due to the large number of gangsters. BM finally managed to knock Choi Taho down. A while later, Kim Myong Gil arrived with two containers of gasoline. He intended to burn Choi Taho's house, but before he did, 
He took a knife that Choi Taho had used to cut his face decades ago. When Myong Gil saw the wide open safe, his greedy soul emerged. He then took all of Choi Taho's money, leaving not even a single bill. How shocked Gun Wu and Hai En Ju were to find Choi Taho's house on fire upon their return from the orphanage, Gun Wu carried Wu Jin out and took him to the hospital. While Hai En Ju's tears broke when she saw Choi Taho lying lifeless on the ground, doctors were having a hard time in surgery on Wu Jin, who was bleeding profusely, and Gun Wu begged the nurse to take as much of his blood as Wu Jin needed to save his friend's life. Hai En Ju's deep sadness at the loss of a grandfather figure who always looked after her and loved her and Wu Jin's dying condition made her soul shaken, so without Gun Wu's knowing, she left the hospital. When Gun Wu looked for her and couldn't find her on the hospital, he thought that Hai Yun Ju probably left to calm herself down. In the midst of his sadness, Gun Wu finally got the good news that Wu Jin's surgery had gone well, and he was now being taken to the ward for observation. A few months later, Wu Jin finally fully recovered. Both of them had left Seoul and settled in the countryside with Owen Muk. Every day, they continued to train physically and mentally for one purpose, to destroy Kim Myon Gil and his minions. Owen Muk was against their plan to return to Seoul, considering that two fighters had died at Myon Gil's hands. With confidence, strong determination, and combining the strengths of many parties, Gun Wu believed he could defeat Kim Myon Gil. One day while visiting Choi Taho's grave, In Muk received a letter from Hai Ju. In her letter, Hai Ju said that she was currently in Rome. She decided to leave because she couldn't bear the constant thought of Mr. Choi if she continued to stay in Korea, and in order to reduce her sadness, she thought that it was better for her to go as far away as possible. A few days later, Owen Muk gave a suitcase of money to Gun Wu and Wu Jin. The money was the last reserve fund left by Choi Taho. In Muk, hoped that Gun Wu and Wu Jin could uncover Kim Myong Gil's crimes. The next day, Gun Wu and Wu Jin arrived in Seoul. They then stayed at a small boarding house owned by Owen Muk's granddaughter, Demin. Demin told them that in the basement, there was a car that Owen Muk had bought to support their plan. Gun Wu and Wu Jin started their plan by gathering support from the moneylenders who had been cheated by Jam Myong. But most of them chose to give up their money rather than risk their lives. On the other hand, the threat of bankruptcy also haunts Moon Guang Mu, who was deceived by the Smile Capital Group. Guang Mu was promised funds from the sale of bonds, but in the end he was instead charged with paying a fine for failing the bond transaction. As a consequence of not paying the fine within the specified period by Smile Capital, the mafia from Smile Capital beat him up and ransacked his office. Apparently, Guang Mu did not know about Choi Tavo's death, and the news of his death made him feel guilty, because he had not been able to repay all of Choi Tavo's kindness. Gun Wu and Wu Jin met Kim Ja Myong and his gang who were currently still working for Kim Myong Gil. Jam Myong's target is no longer the homeless, but the disabled. When Gun Wu and Wu Jin caught him, Jam Myong realized that he would not win against these two boxers, and in the end, he revealed all the information about Kim Myong Gil's business, which was currently managed by Jung Min. Jam Myong revealed that the dispute between Kim Myong Gil and Hong Min Biam still continues, because the Lyle group has not approved the construction of the casino. Since he couldn't get Hong Min Biam's contact information, Wu Jin sent a message to Hong Min Biam through his social media account. During this time, Kim Myong Gil is still threatening Hong Min Biam because he is not willing to sign a contract letter containing the return of the $100 billion loan in interest. The intimidated Hong Min Biam couldn't do anything about it because he was afraid of his nasty video getting out. Then, one night, after being tortured by Myong Gil, he unexpectedly got a message from someone who was offering to help him fight Myong Gil. That person also claimed that he knew where Kim Myong Gil kept the video files of all of his victims. Hong Min Biam's cousin, who is also a police officer, Gang Yong, then set up a meeting of Gun Wu, Wu Jin, and Hong Min Biam at a bar. Gun Wu, who never drank alcoholic beverages, finally accepted Hong Min Biam's invitation to drink to build trust between them. As for Wu Jin, he showed them a scar on his stomach. While under the influence of alcohol, Hong Min Biam expressed his despair that he couldn't fight Kim Myong Gil. After that meeting, Gang Yong began to believe that Gun Wu and Wu Jin were good guys. Hong Min Biam then invited them to his house to resume their drinking binge. The next day, Wu Jin even prepared breakfast for everyone. Gun Wu shared all his plans against Kim Myong Gil. They then enlisted the help of a computer expert from the police to hack into Kim Myong Gil's phone in order to run an app on it, 
so that they could activate the automatic destruction feature on Kim Myong Gil's safe. Gang Yong then introduced his team to Gun Wu and Wu Jin, and they agreed to carry out their mission on the day of the contract signing between Hong Min Biam and Kim Myong Gil. On the day of the contract signing, Hong Min Biam stated that he would sign the contract if Kim Myong Gil was willing to delete his nasty video. Kim Myong Gil couldn't do anything because the whole meeting room was under CTTD surveillance. As soon as Myong Gil handed over his phone, Hong Min Biam activated the Wi Fi on Kim Myong Gil's phone so that the cyber team could hack it. It didn't take long, they finally managed to find the safe app and turn on the system. So the safe in Myong Gil's house caught on fire. Hong Min Biam can finally breathe a sigh of relief. He has been freed from Kim Myong Gil's threat. Gang Yong then promised Gun Wu and Wu Jin that he would drag Kim Myong Gil to prison. Thanks to their contribution in removing the video, Hong Min Biam offered Gun Wu laser surgery to remove the scars on his face, but Gun Wu again refused to have laser surgery. As he said that thanks to the scar on his face, he was able to meet many great people. After their first successful mission, Gun Wu and Wu Jin went on to their next mission. They will investigate Biam, Kim Myong Gil's trusted bodyguard. Biam was the only person who knew where Kim Myong Gil kept his gold. Upon arriving at his house, Myong Gil smelled a burnt smell. And when he checked his safe, all the important files he had were already burned. Myong Gil then contacted a police officer named Jam Min, who had been working for him. Kim Myong Gil ordered Jam Min to find those who worked for Choi Ta Ho, and he also asked him to track down Owen Muk. Afterward, Myong Gil told his wife that he still had backup videos of other officials and that he planned to threaten Hong Min Biam again when the time was right. Kim Myong Gil started his revenge spree. He ordered some gangsters to find Owen Muk. After questioning some people from supermarkets to rice sellers, those gangsters finally found Owen Muk's house. They then brought in Basul. The news of Owen Muk's kidnapping finally reached Kun Wu, and the kidnappers asked Kun Wu to go to an abandoned mall in the Incheon area. The kidnappers also forbade him from reporting to the police. Damon, who had also learned that her grandfather had been kidnapped, decided to join Kun Wu and Wu Jin. Damin, who was also a good archer, wanted to help them save her grandfather. To save Owen Muk, Wu Jin enlisted the help of his senior, none other than Mun Guang Mu. Although his hand injury has not yet recovered, Wang Mu felt he had to repay his favor to Owen Muk. Upon arriving at the empty building, they divided their tasks. Wu Jin and Gun Wu will enter through the lobby door, while Wang Mu and De Min will enter through the parking lot door so they can watch Wu Jin from upstairs. The fight began when BM gave the signal to strike Gun Wu and Wu Jin down. With three punches, Gun Wu managed to knock out his opponents one by one. From upstairs, Damin took aim with her arrow. The head of the gangsters then tried to stop Damin. Luckily, Guang Mu managed to block him. The two got into a fierce fight. The gangster leader, who used to be an MNA fighter, managed to overpower Guang Mu. Fortunately, Wu Jin soon arrived to help him. On the other hand, Gun Wu was still trying hard to fight Biam, who had once defeated him. But this time, Gun Wu's right hand strength has improved. So, with just one blow, he managed to knock Biam down and beat him mercilessly. Biam was knocked out by Gun Wu, and so was Wu Jin, who managed to defeat the gangster boss. Gun Wu and Wu Jin then interrogated the gang leader. With some threats and torture, he finally told them where Owen Muk was. They then rushed to a fish farm to rescue Owen Muk, and Gun Wu also requested Gang Yong's help to raid the place. Gang Yong, who had not realized the betrayal of his subordinate, Jam Min, later asked him to send help to Gun Wu. And of course, Jam Min reported the plan to Kim Myong Gil, so he left the place immediately. Gun Wu and Wu Jin's efforts to find Owen Muk were fruitless. When they arrived at where Owen Muk was, no one was there, and Gang Yong suspected that the information about the raid had been leaked. Meanwhile, Guang Mu brought BM to an empty warehouse to dig up information about the location of Choi Taho's gold that Kim Myong Gil stole. However, BM's loyalty to his master is no joke. He even bites his own tongue to commit suicide, and it makes Gun Wu panic. Gun Wu then called an ambulance. He didn't want to lose someone's life just for the sake of their plan. The following day, Gang Yong almost got poisoned when he drank coffee at his favorite cafe. Apparently, Kim Myong Gil had sent someone to disguise himself as a waiter to mix a dangerous substance in his drink. Fortunately, not far from the cafe, there was a restaurant. Gang Yong spit out the drink he had drunk by swallowing some salt. The same terror was also experienced by a detective and cyber team that Gang Yong had previously assigned to hack Kim Myong Gil's cell phone.
Hongmin Biam got frustrated when he found out that there were copies of his video. Kim Myong Gil warned Gun Wu and Wu Jin to stop all their plans if they wanted to save Owen Muk. Myong Gil ordered them to come to the fish farm later in the evening. Gun Wu's sadness at not being able to save Owen Muk has left him doubting that he can win the fight, not to mention that he hasn't been able to contact Gang Yong. Seeing Gun Wu shrouded in sadness and doubt, Wu Jin tried to encourage his friend not to give up. Myong Gil's hired thugs turned out to not be as great as Gun Wu thought. Eat without weapons, the two of them managed to get rid of all their opponents. When Demin saw Kim Myong Gil about to hurt her grandfather, she swiftly shot Myong Gil right in the chest, so that he finally decided to run away. Although they failed to capture Kim Myong Gil, everyone was relieved that they managed to bring Owen Muk home safely. Although he was still weak and hospitalized, Gang Yang mobilized a joint team to search and seize Kim Myong Gil's house. They also arrested Myong Gil's accomplices, including Lieutenant Jamin. The fish farm was also inspected, as it was believed to be the location Myong Gil used to execute his enemies. Although Kim Myong Gil has been declared a wanted man by the police, it didn't put Hong Min Biam at ease. He wanted to see Kim Myong Gil in prison as soon as possible. Gun Wu and Wu Jin offered to help Hong Min Biam find Kim Myong Gil. They were not willing to let Kim Myong Gil roam around freely with Choi Taho's money. Gun Wu's guess about Kim Myong Gil's escape plan turned out to be true. Chen Min, who was still loyal to Kim Myong Gil, was seen one day buying a container truck that would be used to move all of Kim Myong Gil's stolen gold. Gun Wu then called Jang Du and tried to get him to cooperate because he was the only one who knew where Kim Myong Gil would escape to. However, Jang Du demanded 1 billion won in return for this important information. Having no money, Gun Wu had no choice but to ask Hong Min Biam for help. Meanwhile, elsewhere, Kim Myong Gil was preparing to smuggle his gold to Vietnam. After receiving the payment he requested from Gun Wu, Jang Du gave Gun Wu information about the ship's name, container number, and Kim Myong Gil's departure time. Based on this information, Gun Wu and Wu Jin managed to find Myong Gil on the ship. He chased after Kim Myong Gil, who tried to hide among the containers. The two got into a very fierce fight. Kim Myong Gil had to admit that Gun Wu was much tougher than him. After taking Myong Gil down, Gun Wu said that he would let Kim Myong Gil live as long as he never set foot in Korea again. Meanwhile, on the other side of the ship, Wu Jin managed to immobilize Jun Min with a taser gun. At first, he struggled to knock out Biam, who repeatedly tossed his body on the ground. When Biam started to let his guard down, Wu Jin was eager to finish him off and in the end Wu Jin managed to win the fight. After knocking out all their opponents, Gun Wu and Wu Jin promised to return to their old lives as boxers. As the morning approached, they managed to find a container filled with hundreds of pieces of pure gold. They also managed to secure Kim Myung Gil's cell phone and hand it over to the authorities. Hong Min Biam's hard time was finally over. Hong Min Biam then caught up with them on his yacht. After they checked and counted Mr. Choi's gold that Kim Myong Gil had stolen, they were shocked that the gold was worth more than $80 billion. Although the owner is dead and has no hairs, Gun Wu and Wu Jin had no intention of owning the gold. They hoped that Hong Min Biang, as the owner of the construction company, could build a hospital to help the poor. To that, Hong Min Biang agreed. He was even willing to find additional funds. He then gave two gold bars each to Gun Wu and Wu Jin as a thank you for their struggle. Hong Min Biam was sure that if Mr. Choi was still alive, he would also do the same. Choi Taho's dreams were finally realized thanks to the honesty and struggle of these two fighters. At the end of the story, Gun Wu went to pick up his mother at the orphanage. They are now living happily and fulfilled with many blessings in life.